I'm Bruce Kaiser. Another mission moment is what we're talking about here. I'm a member of Grace United Methodist Church, and with us today is Bob and Karen Messersmith. How are you folks doing? Doing great. Hi, Bruce. Bob? Fine, thanks. All right, smiling people to interview today, and they should. They got a lot to smile about because they've kept something going here at Grace United Methodist Church that's uh, come kind of come across a few bumps lately since COVID came in. We're talking about the paper pantry, which was started years ago. You guys have taken the helm of this now, which is paper pantry's kind of a tough one. There's a lot of logistics to this, right? There are a lot, but I have to say the way it was organized before I took it over made my job so much easier. Matt and Jody Kaiser had things running like mm -hmm. clockwork, and so they Jody taught me the ropes and showed me what to do, and I don't think we, other than because we had to change some things due to COVID, I don't think we changed anything with the way they were running things because they just had it right. really set up beautifully. So that made my job a whole lot easier to take it over. Does this guy sitting next to you, does he help a lot? And, and they had a dedicated team. Uh, they had, team they did. And that, every month. And, that, and that's true. We had a lot of people uh, downstairs, but things have changed since COVID. So we don't have people coming into the church now and because we had a reception area down there we had a lot of people close together and covid comes in we wonder what are we going to do because you know paper pantry it's it supplies things people can't get with food stamps and, and the like it's paper products and laundry detergents and and things like that we, which we've talked about in an uh earlier episode so tell us how things have changed how have you coped because uh, people can still get what they need from from paper pantry well, uh, thanks to Carrie nudging us along uh, back in March when we weren't sure what to do when everything was closing down, we came up with a way among a few of us to do a drive through service. So instead of having people come in the church, which we felt wasn't safe with the COVID situation, mm -hmm. we organized that they can be in their cars and they can drive up to the awning area outside. And we have everything staged there. We bring it up from downstairs in the storage room every second Saturday of, of every month. And we pass out the same products, which was, you know, the bags. One bag has toilet paper, paper towel, and soap, and the other has dish soap and laundry soap. Mm -hmm. And then we put up some tables with a few extra options. It's a little bit different than what we normally used to do, but we still give them an option to pick out some extra things. And um, they were beyond grateful that we kept going with it during these tough times. And this is still between uh, 10 and noon when this uh, Correct. When the Timing's people Timing's the same, 10 to noon every second Saturday of the month. Okay. And uh, I, both, I guess both of you know it's still kind of hard to get some of the paper products, too. We always, uh, when we talk about this, like to kind of put out feelers for anybody that might be able to pick up a little extra something at a store and bring it on into Grace Church here, Grace United Methodist Church, and it'll, it'll get packaged and given to those who are in need. Yeah, that was one of the scary parts because when we found out we couldn't get the paper products, you know, we are a paper pantry and we couldn't right, get paper yeah. products. <laughs> you got to have paper. What are we going to do here? And yeah. I really didn't think it was going to last, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, but we put out the... Uh, the request to the congregation to help support, mm -hmm. and uh, we've never had to turn anyone away from, because of uh, a shortage right. of products. And you know, a lot of uh, a lot of times, if you go into a store and you find a paper product too, and you say, "Oh yeah, paper towels or whatever, paper pantry can use that." Sometimes you're limited to what the store will even let you buy. But I think the more people in the congregation that they can kind of pitch in and help. I mean, it adds up. Grace has a big uh, congregation. If everybody can just every now and then pick up some extra uh, toilet tissue, paper towels, things like that, it does help a lot. It really does. It's been huge, the donations we've gotten through the congregation. And I heard Matt on his interview say what a worrier he is, and I could relate to that. I'm <laughs> equally worrier, maybe more so than he is. And I've worried about everything under the sun related to this, and every single time everything works out. And during the early months of the pandemic, we couldn't order any online order, which is what we normally would do. Jody right. talked about the $1,200 to $1,500 worth of products every month, which we would order online and pick up at the Dollar Tree. None of our products could be ordered that way. So with uh, donations from people that we were appealing to in the congregation, along with what the local store could kind of cobble together for us, mm -hmm. we continue to manage our inventory and we continue to be able to s serve up to 300 families every month, which is fabulous. I think that Dollar Tree likes the paper pantry too, because we've thrown Through a little business. bit of business that way, yeah. haven't we? But if you go down into the storeroom where we, we store all these, you uh -huh. know, as we start accumulating them right before the paper pantry, you get a mountain of the, the paper towels and yeah. toilet paper. Then in the you know after paper pantry's over, 
it's like bare down there. And we're yeah. like, oh, no, is this going to be the month where we run out of stuff? It always we has been did. a little scary uh, downstairs because even when – and I remember when we had it downstairs, just bags and bags and bags. And you look at that and go, wow, look at that. And then it's done. I, I don't know if we're going to have enough. Rarely did we run out of something, and it was maybe just one little item. But uh, but paper pantry's done very very well. I'd give it I give it a ninety nine point nine on the hundred percent scale. So anything you guys would like to add to this? Um, oh, and I, let me ask you this before I forget: How are the numbers uh, as far as people coming through? Our numbers used to vary. weren't we about on the low side two fifty, and we get up over three hundred up to. Th- three and a quarter, even more than that sometimes. Yeah, those, that's right, Bruce. Those were the numbers we had inside, and we've been pretty close to that. I would say we're a little bit down, but we're always over 200, and several of the times we've been over 250. Mm-hmm. So we still get a steady stream of people, and we're busy almost the whole two hours. And, and like I said, the people are just so grateful, so thankful, and just so appreciative that we've continued to manage to work this out for them, and they're just very happy to be here. And, and you get help. thank yous from a lot a of the lot people. A lot of thank yous. Yeah. And, and interestingly, you also get people giving back. I've had people bring me things to take to the Weather Amnesty. They donate that when they're How coming about to pick that? up. I've had people wow. give donations to other organizations that we support and just really giving back when they can. Okay. Aren't they awesome? I think you guys are awesome. That's a, that's a big project paper pantry there's a lot to do with that i'd worry too but i think you're doing fine well it's all about the people that support it all around us with the little part we do is you know not that much compared to the volunteers the people that pick things up every week from the dollar tree the people that are here every saturday the second saturday so it's it's a major undertaking but we just have so much support that it makes it easy do we still have some members that are packing the bags downstairs too actually melody's done a great job organizing that what she started doing during COVID is she's got different families doing it in order to keep the social distancing instead of having groups of people she's got oh, families a family at a time come in and do, oh come what in a great idea own, and she's involved a lot of new families in that that weren't involved before so did she I, think of that she came up with that and i think I thought wow. it was a great idea good for you Good thought. Any anything else you guys would I mean, like to just, add? Just to add to that, at some point we will we will be back inside, and we will. Yeah. I mean, really looking forward to it because you know it'll be nice to be back in, won't it? It will be. But I mean, that that explorers room was really something special when we were inside, and yeah, uh, you know, now it's more of a handout, and uh, right, we certainly want to get back to where you know the people came in and really. Well, it's a lot more personal inside and, and welcoming. Yeah. So. Yeah, because we we'd serve little refreshments yeah. down yeah. there, and and. People could make prayer right. requests and things like that. Much more involved, yeah. I think. And we've had, to, we've people had enjoy a lot that. of that dedicated team that isn't helping us because of the COVID. We certainly are right. hoping they're It has changed life lately, right, hasn't it? Has, yeah, so. but it's not going to be forever. Yeah, we so will cool. get back to normal. That's what I hear anyway, and we will. You guys, great job. Bob and Karen Messersmith, we, we enjoyed it. Another mission moment, and very excited about this one too. Right here at Grace United Methodist Church.